This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Jeremy Renner, the A-list Hollywood star featured in countless classics such as National Lampoon's Senior Trip, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, and of course, Neo Ned, which is exactly what it looks and sounds like. Yes, Jeremy Renner was in this movie. Oh yeah, and he's in some Marvel superhero thing or something? I don't know. The guy is a bona fide star with an illustrious Hollywood career and a huge number of fans. And wherever there are dedicated fans, there are dedicated fan spaces. Places for people to gather and discuss their favourite celebrities, to keep up to date with news and updates, and to make weird fan cams and edits. These spaces tend to pop up organically, you know, Twitter pages and websites and forums created by the fans for the fans, but Jeremy Renner, the god that he is, wanted better for his fans. So he created an official dedicated app for his devotees, and, well, chaos ensued. Today let's talk about the glorious rise and catastrophic fall of the Jeremy Renner app. The Jeremy Renner app is interesting because it's kind of a bit of an anomaly. Celebrity apps are dime a dozen, from Kim Kardashian's pay-to-play fashion game, to Tom Hanks' writing app, to Ellen DeGeneres' hot hands and heads up games. Which side note, my sibling swears that they got matched up and actually versed like the real Ellen on one of those multiplayer apps in like 2016, so uh, yeah, you could say that my family has industry connections. Actually that was more of a brag back then than it is now in light of, you know, events. Anyway, my point is celebrity apps are common, yes, but they actually tend to be pretty detached from the celebrity themselves. They're just games or online courses or widgets with a famous person's face slapped on top and packaged with their official endorsement. The Jeremy Renner app was a little bit different. It was a social media app created solely for fans of Jeremy Renner, where they could not only discuss and post about the actor, but actually interact with him. One of the main draws of the app was that Jeremy Renner himself had his own account and would frequently post, interact with fans, and do giveaways. Unlike all of those other celebrity apps, this one was actually pretty hands-on and allowed users to directly engage with Jeremy Renner himself. This was the business model of EscapeX, the mobile app developer that created Jeremy Renner Official, which was the actual name of the app even though colloquially it's just come to be known as the Jeremy Renner app. EscapeX has created over 350 apps, pretty much all of them social media sites dedicated to specific celebrities where they can personally interact with their fans and vice versa, which is why it's absolutely horrible that one of their most notable apps is the official Chris Delia app. That man did not need any more access to his young and impressionable fans than he already had, and thankfully as far as I can tell it's not a thing anymore, at least I hope to god that it's not. Some of Escapex's other celebrity apps include Enrique Iglesias, Akon, Tyler Posey, and Tommy Chong, but there are countless others, many of them being Bollywood stars. So yeah, clearly this company wasn't dealing with the creme de la creme of talent, no offense to Tyler Posey, but they had a pretty respectable roster of fairly random celebrities to partner with. And one such celebrity, of course, was Jeremy Renner. Now compared to many other celebs on Escapex's resume, Jeremy Renner was actually a pretty big deal. He was a huge Hollywood star, I mean the dude was literally Hawkeye and he had a super sizable fan base. Enter Jeremy Renner Official, launched in March of 2017. Before we even talk about the app itself, I just have to acknowledge the absolutely insane image that they picked for the icon. On. Just this incredibly oversaturated, scary image of Jeremy Renner staring into your soul with the most piercing blue eyes you've ever seen. Imagine every time you open your phone, every time you get a notification, seeing this face. Also notable was the app's loading screen, a smoldering, low-quality black and white image of Jeremy Renner staring seductively into your eyes. What a dreamboat. The App Store page promised many things. Exclusive content, the ability to get to know Jeremy and other fans, and exciting giveaways with cool prizes such as movie tickets, signed merchandise, other surprises, and more. <laughs> they really gave up on that last one, huh? It was an exciting time to be a Jeremy Renner fan, and with the app being free, with in-app purchases of course, thousands of Jeremy Renner die-hard fans flocked to the app to engage with their favourite celebrity. The app was strange to say the least, it was basically an exact copy of Instagram if the only person that could post on Instagram was Jeremy Renner. The homepage would simply take you to a feed of all of Jeremy Renner's posts, which included photos, video updates, and behind-the-scenes content, as well as occasional giveaways. The content was pretty low quality, no offense to Jeremy Renner of course, but it was pretty evident that this was just a quick cash grab to make some money and he didn't seem terribly invested in it. A lot of his posts were either reposts from his actual Instagram, low quality images with generic captions including the recurring hashtag happy Wednesday, or duplicate posts. 
As noted by Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden in their video on the app, Jeremy Renner would often use hashtag or tag other celebrities in posts, but since his app didn't have hashtag functionality and the people that he tagged were not on the app, the links would simply lead nowhere. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if EscapeX had some interns running Jeremy Renner's account considering how busy he likely was on his day-to-day -day life, but you know, that's just a conspiracy theory. For all I know, Mr. Renner was obsessively tracking his comments and replying to fans on the official Jeremy Renner app in between shoots on the set of The Avengers. <laughs> the main way that fans could engage with Jeremy Renner on the app was by using stars. Stars were basically akin to likes on Instagram or Facebook, but instead of just one, you could leave as many as you wanted, provided that you had enough. That's where the in-app purchases come in, because stars cost money, and there were multiple options for star packages ranging from $1 to $2 all the way up to $100, depending how big of a super fan you were. Once you had the stars, you could use them on Jeremy or other fans' posts, and each post had a ranking of the top three fans in order of stars that they left on it. Basically, fans were paying to leave stars on Jeremy Renner's posts, therefore boosting their visibility and the likelihood that they would see them and therefore validate their existence. Reddit user Mikkel commented on a thread about the app, quote, One of my first jobs ever was a bottom of the totem pole gig at EscapeX, AMA. I left before the collapse, so I don't know what that looked like internally, but I can tell you Mr. Renner brought in the biggest bugs, because there was a mean girl cadre of rich white middle-aged woman who paid thousands every week for Jeremy to say hello and good morning to them. Despite the fact that his post ranged from low quality photos of himself off of Google Images to a photo of a bunch of onion rings with no caption, the fans loved it. They got daily push notifications from the app as well, wishing them a happy Wednesday or telling them to have a great day, which was honestly pretty wholesome and nice. It was a quiet and fairly peaceful place for Jeremy Renner's fans to come together and celebrate their favourite celebrity until it wasn't. Soon the Jeremy Renner app would become a bustling hub of chaos as hundreds of users joined with one singular goal in mind, destroying everything that Jeremy Renner and his fans held dear. But how exactly did it get to this point? Well, let's discuss. Hey, so the Jeremy Renner app is pretty bad, right? But you know what isn't bad? Squarespace, who coincidentally happened to be sponsoring today's video, isn't that wild? You can make any Squarespace template do whatever you want, so your amazing and epic idea, slash brand, slash product, slash site, slash project, stands out online on every device. Squarespace is a brilliant solution for merch, whether you're a business owner or someone who just wants to sell silly shirts and mugs. Design your products and production, shipping and inventory are all handled for you, saving you time and money. There are endless features for small business businesses too. Whether you sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has the tools that you need to start selling online, all while looking stunning, sleek, and professional. You can easily sell custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all of the amazing things that Squarespace can do. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash izzies to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Video, and now let's get back into things. Hilariously, you can pinpoint the exact post that led to the downfall of the Jeremy Renner app. It all started when Stefan Heck, a comedy writer from Vancouver, made the following post on the app. Jeremy Renner, have a rockin' weekend everyone, what's the plan? Stefan Heck, I will be looking at porno on my computer. In a Deadspin article aptly titled, I broke the official Jeremy Renner app by posting the word porno on it, Stefan explained that he simply made the post for fun before realizing that he had discovered something big. Another user of the Jeremy Renner app had replied to his porno posting, which gave Stefan a push notification, which looked like this. Jeremy Renner, at Stefan Heck, nasty, not cool. Yes, for some godforsaken reason, the app developers had programmed all of the push notifications for fan posts and replies to look like they had come from Jeremy Renner himself. For a split second, Stefan Heck really thought that Marvel star and Hollywood celebrity Jeremy Renner was scolding him on the official Jeremy Renner app for using the word porno. Of course, he soon figured out that this was just a reply from a disapproving Renner fan, but upon this discovery, the floodgates opened. This was too perfect. Not only did the app hilariously format push notifications to make it look like Jeremy Renner himself was texting you, but there was clearly no moderation and a huge 
lack of filters. Up until this point, the app had been pretty much entirely used as intended by peaceful and supportive fans, but all it took was one irony poisoned internet user to topple the entire ecosystem. Stefan Heck made a Twitter post noting this discovery, and once Twitter users discovered this flaw in the system, there was no stopping the chaos that ensued. Additionally, as noted earlier, Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden, two hugely popular and beloved commentary YouTubers, made a collab video about the app and how weird it was, which blew up and got millions more eyes on the app, which likely contributed heavily to the mass trolling that would ensue. Users quickly discovered that there were no barriers in place to stop them from using the name Jeremy Renner or using Jeremy Renner as a profile picture, so the app soon became rife with impersonators. To everyone criticizing my app because Casey Anthony has created an account and is posting on the fan page, spare me your tears. This is an all-inclusive app. If you don't like it, you are free to leave. Book Mom for Renner says, At Jeremy Renner, you are not the real Jeremy. You are a big fake. Finally, an app that isn't afraid to be Casey Anthony positive. Five stars. I am Jeremy Renner. Are there any crack cocaine dealers in the Los Angeles metropolitan area? I am Jeremy Renner. Users quickly moved on though from impersonating Jeremy Renner to impersonating all manner of other celebrities since, again, there were no filters in place to stop them from doing so. At Brendan Fraser, Hey, it's me, Brendan Fraser from The Mummy. Let's get some PBRs and hang out sometime. I'm Canadian, by the way. At Ben Affleck, Hey Jeremy, wanna get a hamburger sometime? BA. Face palm emoji, Learn English before troll. At Ben Affleck, I was in the town. At Steve Jobs, have fun Jeremy. At Walt Disney World, looks like you are having a great time Jeremy. Love to see your nips on display. Have a magical day. At OJ Simpson, hey Jeremy, want to join my fantasy league? Happy Ren's Day. At Mecarena 3.0, you are obsolete flesh bag. At Richard Jewell, Jeremy, I just want you to know that I wasn't responsible for the 1996 Atlanta Olympics bombing. It was Eric Rudolph. At Jar Jar Binks, me said Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> An inside joke began to form as users began posting as Jeremy Renner's alternate universe evil twin, often referred to as Rerumi Jenner. <laughs> Jeremy Renner, photo of onion rings. Jeremy Renner's evil twin. Guess what, brother? I put my balls all over those rings. Jeremy Renner's evil twin, signing off. <laughs> Rerumi Jenner, I will destroy Jeremy. Jeremy, I have longed for this day since you and I were born from the tubes. Always I have been the abomination, never have I tasted the sun. No longer. I will destroy you, Jeremy. What is yours will be mine, soon I will be the hawk guy. Before long it will be I that have fun app. When I destroy you, I will do kiss with your wife. This will be good. Do not fear, I come soon. With no system in place to stop these impersonators and trolls, the moderators, who up until this point had only known peace and quiet, suddenly found themselves on the front line of an explosive war between the Jeremy Renners and the Rerumi Jenners. Their only weapon seemed to be banning accounts, which ironically led to more accounts popping up with the sole purpose of spreading awareness about the bans. Happy Ren's Day, at Jeremy Renner Porno Truth. Without freedom of speech, there is no modern world, just a barbaric one. Ai Weiwei. Something to ponder given the recent wave of bannings on here. Twitter users were sharing the posts that got them banned and posting speed runs of who could get banned off the Jeremy Renner app the quickest. It was total anarchy. Or should I say, Renarchy. Sorry? Just to remind you all at this point, all of these messed up posts were appearing on people's phones in this format, looking like direct messages from Jeremy Renner himself, which makes them all 10 times funnier. With more and more users joining the platform and their posts becoming more bizarre and crass than ever before, not to mention the growing number of impersonators, moderators, and even escapex themselves were powerless to stop it. And so they pulled the plug. In September of 2019, the official Jeremy Renner app was closed down and removed off the App Store. Jeremy Renner made a heartbreaking final post to the app, announcing its closure. Quote, Goodbye. The app has jumped the shark, literally. Due to clever individuals that were able to manipulate ways to impersonate me and others within the app, I have asked EscapeX, the company that runs this app, to shut it down immediately and refund anyone who has purchased any stars over the last 90 days. What was supposed to be a place for fans to connect with each other has turned into a place that is everything I detest and can't or won't condone. My sincere apologies for this to have not turned out the way it was intended. To all the super fans who have supported me with your words or encouragement, amazing art, stories, and time shared on the app, a genuine thank you, and I hope to see you on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. JR. Mm. 
The enormity of the fallout from this debacle cannot be understated. Okay, well maybe that's a little bit dramatic, but the story really did make waves all over the internet. There were countless articles in publications like the New York Times, GQ, Polygon, Wired, The Guardian, the LA Times, and more. Not to mention the impact that it had on social media with memes and jokes riffing on the hilarity of the app and how it was brought down. And honestly, I can't blame everyone for jumping on the bandwagon. The fact that an official Jeremy Renner app existed was hilarious enough, but the fact that it was plagued with trolls and celebrity imposters to the point where it had to be shut down was just too much. It was comedy gold, but not everyone was laughing. In fact, EscapeX was scrambling to save face. For everyone else on the internet, it was a big joke, but for them it was hugely embarrassing and had the potential to permanently tarnish their reputation in the field of celebrity apps. Before the Jeremy Renner app, it was just a quick money-making venture for B-list celebrities, but after its collapse, well, now there was the possibility that you could become the laughing stock of the internet if your app gone to the wrong hands. In an interview with Wired, the CEO of EscapeX claimed that it was a freak situation and wrote, quote, Out of the 500 influencers that we're working with, we've never had a case of any apps being hurt by this. Am I concerned about this? Not more than I'm concerned about 50 other things I'm dealing with as a startup company. There's bad people out there, there always will be. We can't let them set the narrative, but definitely we could do better. We're a startup company, in an ecosystem of trillion dollar companies, we're relatively small. We try to do whatever we can in terms of technology, but definitely for sure we could do better. The real question is, could they have done better? Was the cataclysmic destruction of the Jeremy Renner app the fault of EscapeX and their poor management and shady business practices, or was it inevitable from the start? Well, let me present to you both perspectives, a criticism and a defense of the Jeremy Renner app. Firstly, let's get one thing straight. Plain and simple, this app was bad. It was developed poorly, had little to no moderation and filtering system, and the moderators were nowhere near equipped enough to handle a social media app of this scale. From the previously mentioned Wired article, the EscapeX CEO seemed to take a very blasé attitude towards the apps, describing them as safe havens for superfans. And while yes, that's what they're intended for, any good developer knows that whatever you're making, whether it be software, a website, or indeed an app, people will try to break it and get around that intended use. It's just human nature, and while it's great that supposedly out of 500 clients nothing nefarious has ever happened to any one of EscapeX's other social media apps, they're the exceptions to the rule. In my opinion, with Escape EscapeX's lax attitude towards their apps, it was only a matter of time before something like this happened. I mean, for Christ's sake, the app didn't have any senses at all, allowing users to type curse words and slurs. Why would the Jeremy Renner app ever need that to be a feature? Just add a basic content filtration system so posts with cuss words can't get posted. It's really that simple. In Jeremy Renner's final post, he claimed that, quote, clever individuals were able to manipulate ways to impersonate me and others. In reality, any user could just type in their name as Jeremy Renner and the app would be like, yeah, cool, sounds legit. There was nothing clever or sneaky or underhanded about this. These weren't some mastermind hackers bringing the app down. It was a huge fundamental flaw in the app itself that literally anyone could exploit. You would think at the very least a dedicated fan app for Jeremy Renner wouldn't let users put their name as Jeremy Renner. And then there's the hilarious fact that more than a few people accidentally brought excessive amounts of stars because when viewing star packages, a button asking you to use your thumb to make a purchase will suddenly pop up, often while people are tapping the home button to exit the app or take a screenshot. You know, it's fine, I'm sure this person didn't need that $100 for anything important anyways. On the other hand, I want to be somewhat fair to the Jeremy Renner app. Yes, a dedicated social media company should have been aware of the potential pitfalls of running a social media app, but they probably didn't envision one of those pitfalls being an insane large-scale trolling campaign heavily involving Casey Anthony. What happened was so sudden, so bizarre, so outrageous outrageous that I don't think anyone could have foreseen that it would happen or prepared for it. It's also notable that even before Rena get in, the app wasn't exactly as rosy and filled with sunshine and rainbows as many claimed that it was. Generally, it was a pretty chill place, but it wasn't immune to being a social media platform. There was bullying and harassment well before Stefan Heck ever got involved, bullying which early users claim EscapeX did nothing about. There were claims of the star leaderboards being rigged, accusations of false advertising when one contest that Jeremy 
Renner ran promised a visit to the set of the Avengers, which ultimately just ended up taking place at his house. And then the contest winner claimed that she didn't even get to go to his home, which Jeremy Renner then disputed. These grievances and many others are covered in a really great 2017 article by Kate Nibbs, an article that was published well before any of the actual trolling began. The point being that the Jeremy Renner app had issues from the start. Would a proper content filtration and moderation system have helped? 1000% yes, hands down, absolutely no question about that, it very much would have helped. <laughs> would it have prevented the downfall of the app? If I'm being honest, probably also yes. <laughs> But the cracks were already beginning to show and there's no guarantee that the app wouldn't have gone up in flames in some other way. If outside infiltrators hadn't brought the app down, it probably would have just been brought down by insane middle-aged wine mum infighting and drama. Which admittedly would have also been super entertaining, but you know, we can't have our cake and eat it too. Since its closure, the Jeremy Renner app has been immortalized in the Internet Hall of Fame as one of the most strange, ill-advised and ill-fated apps to exist and its downfall was extensively documented online. A game called the Jeremy Renner app experience was released, allowing you to play a choose your own adventure as Jeremy Renner on the day of the app's closure. The Renner app was a podcast which covered the downfall of the app in the style of a true crime podcast hosted by Caroline Goldfarb and Sarah Ramos. And of course, countless memes still circulate the internet to this day, making fun of Jeremy Renner and his short-lived app. So from myself to all of you watching out there, I bid you one last hashtag Happy Wren's Day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed the topic of that video that's been on my list for a while. Very iconic internet drama. I love it. It's extremely funny to me. And I hope it's funny to you too. I am super, super curious to see if anyone actually used the Jeremy Renner app while it was still up. Um, I was really sad that I couldn't really get very good footage for it. There are definitely people who have recorded it out there, but I wish that I could have it on my own phone so I could like look at every little crevice of the app. Um, and I know some people do still have the app on their phone, like obviously it doesn't work anymore, but they've kept the app so they just had the little Jeremy Renner like smoldering icon on their phone, which is hilarious. So if that's you, if you use the app, if you have any experience experiences with it, if you got banned off it, please, please, please share your experiences in the description. We all want to hear. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any future suggestions for video topics, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, and aside from that, yeah, I hope you have a really good day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. A riddle wrapped in an enigma hidden by a question mark, Astrian Vortex, Lou Mayfeld, Brian Downey, Charlie B, Chicory, Dana Homegardner, Doug, Dozo Blint, Fitzy, Grip Gunderson, Helm Hamburger Hand, Hazy, Jesse Chisholm, Joe Bradshaw, Katrina Likes 5e e Stuff, Leanne O, Lee XX, Matt LRJ, Michelle Olsen, Mr. Waffle in Love, Oliver Brains, Sheriff Whiskey, SHSL Sunsun, Simon, Sophie H. Thy Heavenly and Xavier Araujo. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. It means the world. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you so much for the support. I love you guys and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye!